So for case of Java 9, uh, today's topic is about looking into the feature by the Java 9 uh, version provided. So previous session, we have looked into what is the 10 to 11 has been provided in us, right? So here in Java 9, uh, there are two main features. One is the language improvement, addition, removal of API methods. And also there are like uh, different uh, way of coding and you know restructuring of the JDK's uh, libraries into different modular format or modules. So today we are not going to talk about module. Today we're going to focusing about the features, the Java 9 uh, additions over the Java 8. We have like a separate session on Monday on and what is the actual Java model, how we can code this, all that particular good things of modularization. So these are the some of the areas which is going to be touched upon today. I is uh, looking into what are the language features that have been added. Uh, first of all, there is now, apart from the interfaces, there are now private methods allowed, private and private static. And uh, you cannot use any more the underscore as a variable name. Tie with resource now uh, works with variables that have been uh, declared outside the tie with the resource block, but they need to be effective function. So they will be able to be final. So they cannot be changed. That. There's certain language improvement with the collections APIs and the streams API that we have. And you guys have mostly have gone through the JSTL. So that particular G cells and there are some changes to the concurrency also. So today's session will be revolving around this language changes that are there. And then uh, we can have a separate session on module on the next month. So that's setting up. So let's take on the first uh, features that we added to the interfaces. So interfaces, as we know, in the Java is like that Previously in Java 1, the interfaces are there, and by default, the interfaces are what? They are, you know, abstract methods, public method, and those methods can be inherited into other child classes, and they can be implemented or overloaded, right? But in uh, Java 8, what they allow us uh, to use is the default methods. So default method means that you can give now give just like an abstract class. You can have uh, some of the methods having implementation or body, right? So default methods allow us to do that. Okay. Uh, so now in the Java nine, what they allow the default method? They allows methods which will be hidden to the interface. That means a method which can be used as a private method. So private method can be implemented and private method can be both static and non-static. So what is the thought process behind the private method? So private method can also have an implementation and default method can also have an implementation. But when you're using default method, that is available to the child classes. So private method, when you define give certain implementation, those are not available to the child classes. It's available to the other static methods or they are available to the default methods. Okay. So they are uh, only enclosed within the interface scope. They cannot be used outside the interface. So they're like internal method, which a, so that means their implementation cannot be overridden. A default method inter implementation can also be overridden in a child class, whether private method or not. So, so that is the you know thought process which is give right to this. And uh, so here is a simple example that we can see. Uh, we can have like a private method. We wanted to find what is the processor type that we are using in our operating system. That is our system processor type. And what is the actual number of available processor cores are available with us? So these methods, we don't want to get modified. We don't, uh, so this need to be a, the default kind of a fixed implementation they should have. And also I don't want this method modified so i need to somehow hide this particular methods in my inheritance hierarchy so in that case i can mark them as private both i can use static as well as private so let's see an example on this okay so 
So here we have a class. Okay. So here I have defined an interface called interface machine. The description I have not provided any kind of implementation. So all of the child class who are implementing them uh, need to be uh, override that description. Now I'm providing one default uh, machine implementation if I want to. So it actually printed out the total description of it, okay, of that particular machine. It is returning the description. So here I'm just using string format. The description is something that is the first method written, which is a string. Then I'm also printing out what is the processor uh, version is, right? It is 64-bit or 84-bit AMD or something else. Then I'm also printed out as the number of core. So that is person D. So that we are printing out. And this processor uh, number of ports I have also mentioned as private. So that means, or the processor I've also made private. So these are only available within these methods of default or any other static method, which has implementation. But they are not available outside the interface machine to be used. Okay. Hello, sir. Yes. Any question? So the return type would be string, right? In this means string dot format description. Yeah, yeah, it is string. Okay. okay. So, so in in this cell, we have the default implementation. Correct. Means in uh, in Java eleven. No, but no. In, in Java eight or what's in Java. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. So so that means all our private method. We can see there are three private methods. Now we yeah, are adding right. private, right? Yes. Right. Have we had been a particular say static method, right? Static string. Okay. And then I can say okay. Uh, processor family. Uh, no, I can say give him JPM memory. Correct. So yeah. in that case, or maybe I can just return this as in that case, what I can do, I can also call amount of memory. Right in that. Right. So yes. though these methods are entitled to be get overloaded into child implementation, right? So, but what you can see that the private methods are obviously, as we know the scope, they are not be overridden into the child classes because these are not visible to them, right? So that means in uh, in any interfaces now. Uh, I can have either the default keyword, given implementation, I can give the static keyword and given implementation, right? But only those methods or the normal methods which are not having any implementation can be overridden, but the private methods cannot be overridden. So what I'm ensuring by using private or private static, I'm ensuring that they are only available within the interface and their implementation not be seen, so they cannot be overridden in the, the child classes, right? So that I'm making them fixed. So they, for them, uh, these methods are for me is uh, internal uh, to the interface and they are internal to the interface utility methods. Okay. Okay. So sorry, in this case, we cannot uh, make this final also, right? Like if there uh, is final no. keyword. Final keyword, if I just happen the final keyword, it will not allow it because it has a body, right? So by default in interfaces, all methods, if I say they are by default are public and by default are not final because they are overridden, right? But they are by default public. Okay. okay. And rest of the methods, what you have, these are not visible. Private methods are not visible. The non-private methods are visible, either static or default or normal methods, and they can be overrated. But the private method uh, implementation cannot be overrated. Okay. So I have uh, added that implementation into a class called my laptop. Here I have appended one uh, attribute or field 
is a uh, asset id and i'm taking that particular attribute within the constructor of the class now as the description is been not uh, given right probably is not required description is not given so what i can do i can basically overwrite the description and i can append what i wanted to say this i can say this is asset id right so if i have a, like i say extended this to a desktop class uh, there i can say this desktop is associated with a particular seat id or this desktop of a certain make and i can add additional attribute into that but i can only overwrite the methods or the different methods if i wanted to right but i cannot overwrite the other methods those are there those are private and those are also not available to access let's see if they can available to access what method i can also call out here so as you can see your machine i can call description i can call right these two functions are there one is static uh, and can I have the JVM thing? No, this is not in the static scope, so I cannot access that. But I can certainly access that other implementation version. That is what is your machine, right? So that I can overwrite and that I can, you know, do it. So let's see if I wanted to overwrite what else I have here. Methods. So here you can see. It doesn't let me override any other method apart from your machine, correct? Because your machine is now the default implementation, correct? So if I can override. So now let's see, uh, let's spin this out. Okay. So you really are creating the new laptop. I'm giving the some asset ID and then I'm printing this out. So when I'm running this, I'm printing this out. What is happening is, We're going to using the default description from the top and also we can see the processor family the cpu port and how much jvm memory is currently used by the jvm okay fine does you guys have any question related to the private method and the use case of the private method is within the interface No, sir. We are clear, right? So that means the one language feature that is there. Okay. Let's move to about uh, another language feature. Okay. So now in Java, still now we can use uh, previously about from Java 9, we able to use the underscore as a variable name. But right now from Java, previously it was used to throw a warning, but right Java 9 onwards and upwards, it will throw a compilation error, okay? But it's still uh, valid to use the underscore within the variable names along with, uh, we can have any number of underscore, but this is not a better naming convention. So you should be abstained from using underscores, okay? Let's see a quick example. So starting with Java 9, so if I open up this particular line of code, I'm now going to get the compile time error. It will not actually compile if I try to compile this. Yes, here I will use only single underscore. That is also ID mentioned. As of Java 9, underscore is a keyword. And you cannot use as an identifier that we can see in the message here now. Right? So that is not allowed but what is allowed is that you can use any number of underscore so will that particular code run if i here you have given one two three four five six underscore and that is the method and it will get compiled and there will be no errors and also it gets done and you can print out the value okay so basically my request is to use the good naming base good names don't use underscore anywhere neither these are all valid 
right? You can use append the underscore before or after the method similar to the Python. You can ask this, but this is I don't want you guys to use. So that is one feature is that uh, along with the Java movement, they disallow something uh, which is in Java 9 is now throwing an error exception and in Java 8 previously, it was only throwing an warning, okay? Any question on this? No, sir. Sir, I had a question. Sir, uh, in the previous case, uh, the private methods can be implemented uh, within the interface, right? And hmm. also the static methods. But if the static methods are within, I means implemented within the interface only, then what is the utility means? If I cannot overwrite that in the next uh, subclass. Okay. So basically, what I can do, right? I cannot. Hmm. So what I'm saying is that the utility was that that you can allow static methods that is there. So basically, that particular utility is very simple. It was let you use those private methods within the scope of that interface. So that means here, what are my private methods are processor, number of ports and amount of memory, right? All these are private, private or private server, right? So that means they are available within the other default implementation method, be it static or be it default, right? But what I can do, if I say, for example, I can, in the default method, I can override, right? So what I need to do is you just, uh, override this method, right? And in this method, I can give my version, right? And only here print out asset ID. You print out the, or I can simply call the asset ID, the description form here. So when I'm going to run it, so already what is that uh, problem area is that you can guys see that all the default method or static method can be overridden in your subclasses, right? Or implementing classes, right? Here only the asset ID is provided. But when I'm adding private, I'm ensuring that, that their implementations are secure and they are not being overridden into the child classes. I cannot override the methods. I cannot see these are private. And those methods can be used in the default implementation, be it static or be it default keywords, right? So in that case, what I can use, I can use this method as a helper method within the interface. Normally, what happens in a class, I can write some additional method, or additional logic that are stored within that particular class. Similarly, that feature is not possible within the interface, but with the addition of the private keyword, now I'm able to use that okay does that answer the questions yes sir yes sir okay yeah. so just to reiterate that what is does okay it basically allows you to secure your interface implementations are not getting overridden okay fine that is not allowed okay so and then what is the where that scope of this private methods within the default implementation or within the default static methods that we have okay Okay. 
So making the font bigger because previous day I when I'm reviewing the video and see the font was a bit slow. Uh, low and you guys cannot able to view them. Okay. So here we can do is right, we can now use these methods within this uh, your machine methods or default implementation or your static implementation, right? And then you can, you know, there is no way you cannot touch these methods, okay? But these methods are the default and other methods can be overridden into your child classes, correct? So that we can do. And I can add uh, MBL. You can remove the MBL from here. Okay. And I can say JBL in MBL. Okay. Fine. And if I don't override these methods, then what happened? The interface version will be printed out. The, the default implementation from the interface is getting printed out here. Now here we got an error. Why we got the error out here? Cannot create breakpoint in Java H. Okay. So here it is not allowing. So let me just change this. Okay, let's try to run this again. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me do a clean when possible for the project. Okay, so does that clarifies your question, right? I hope so. Okay, now let's talk about the next uh, topic that is try with resources. So anybody can tell me what is the tie with resource means and how the tie with resource actually works. Before you go, go into method, this particular feature. Hello. Uh, basically, the statement uh, is declare one and more uh, resources in try resources. Okay. Then? Uh, basically, uh, like a uh, an object uh, uh, yeah, must be closed after finishing the program. Yeah, we, uh, and uh, uh, and that and try with the resource uh, statement uh, ensure that uh, the uh, basically uh, the each resource uh, is closed uh, at the end of the statement execution. Uh, the, mm -hmm. uh, that's a try statement. Okay, that means I can define one or many. Um... Yeah, resources right. Out there right within yes, that yeah. i and close block and what is yeah. does is at the end of it it's basically uh, then allow us to call a closable method right 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 exactly right and in that particular closable method you can do any kind of a cleanup activity so you don't have to write any kind of final block explicitly correct okay so let's see an example uh, before that let's complete uh, what is the changes they have made in the java 9 so in java 9 what they mention is that that now what you can have you can have tie with resources and the variable can be declared outside the particular method uh, tie with resource block so within the tie with resource constraint here we don't have to declare the variable i can declare the variable from outside correct yeah. Right. Okay. And 
only thing is that it will allow and it will automatically call the close method so there is no explicit uh, if i'm not using the normal type of resource version it need to be inherited uh, implement the method call auto closable okay and when you have the auto closable there then uh, it will be automatically close it will automatically call the close method on it but we can have the, the scanner or whatever you know resource class that are implementing auto closable can be initialized outside this type block it's maybe outside this but only thing that that need to be effectively final right okay now the auto closable why what may be the use case of using this for example so here we can see the scanner class has been initialized somewhere else but the read method the scanner class is sent within the read method as a parameter okay and then we are just instead of you know initialization or declaration of the type with resource previously by java 8 what we are doing we are just using the type scanner and there is no other code syntactically changes but it will do the same operation at is but only the point is that as the variable is declared outside the variable is still not disposed of or the reference is not gone away right previously what happened the type with resources that particular variable was initialized in this in this block right so it was scope was within this block now this variable can be decided outside the block so its scope will be based on that be available still even though the disk has been cleaned up so that is the one uh, pointers we have to keep in mind when we are doing the implementation so let's see an example so tie with resources okay so what i can do i can uh, create an uh, my resource so what is the requirement of any kind of resource is that uh within the use of the types of resources it should be implementing the auto closable class okay so i've implemented the auto closable class right and it is coming from your standard uh, Java dot uh, streams. Uh, let's see what this particular class has been defined. It is defined in the Java lang. Now here I can give an operation doing whatever operation, database operation, etc. Okay, and uh, the close method is that only thing I have to implement or overwrite, right? So that will be called out here, correct? And then within the time resources, what I'm doing, I'm creating a resource class. So first the object it initializes, it can have inside it, maybe wrapping a database uh, connection, or it may be opening a TCP socket somewhere, right? But then I call on the operation on that. So what I do is I make this, pass this value as a variable. When I pass this value as a variable, so this is a places when the ties the resources. So obviously I don't need to call the close method. It will automatically get closed. Call right after the try block get complete either successfully or it executes in an error method, right? So let me also add um, the public constructor and put a message out inside that. Okay. Say so and maybe say I'm going to do some kind of a initialization so i can say resource initialization is a part of this <laughs> okay so resource initialization is a part of this and then the operation then what are going to happen the close method will be called let's see if it compiles or not okay so it's building Is JDK is not defined, so let's just try to define the JDK so we can try to open up the settings here. Oh, I have mentioned the JDK out here, target we have mentioned, but the project uh, properties is not they mention anything out here as in code, etc model settings okay so 
within language we have given. So in the libraries, we have these two libraries been missing. Okay. And also the JDK we can add. Uh, okay, let me see. We have the modules, the Java 9, the project structure. We have mentioned the SDK, right? Okay, we mentioned the SDK. So let's just refresh that. Let's try to close this. So it will detect in the JDK. Okay, so uh, just continuing with the example. Let's see if we can build that later on. Okay. So that being done and that being you know properly be possible to work with. So it will be closed. Now in the resources, what I did in under the resources, JLE and the Java code, we have SRC main Java, and under the resources, we have say participant name, right? So here I given the participant name and I wanted to read the particular resource. Okay, line by line. I want to read the file. So when I want to read the particular resources, right? So what I need to do is uh, say I have this read participant kind of a method that I've defined. Within the read participant, what I'm doing is I'm going to be normal if I'm going to write this particular code. Previously, what I have to do, I have to declare all the variable within itself. So what I have to do, I have to put the scanner class, then new scanner, then new file, then try with the resource class, get class loader, get resource participant. That will return me an URI. And then I need to call that to URI function. And then I get the scanner. Then I have to go uh, scanner.has next. Then I have to print it out. Then I have to handle different exceptions, etc. Okay. So that is the old way I have to see that try with the resources been working. If I wanted to change that, what I can do, I can declare this uh, scanner class and every other class above this and only pass the scanner class. So on the scanner class, it can call the close method or I can pass the scanner class out in a parameter. So that way I can actually able to work. Right. So I don't have to declare now everything within the block. I can define the resources also outside the block or just above the method uh, block also. Okay. Any question on tie with resources that you can see? Mm -hmm. The JDK is not mentioned. Any other way I can fix that? Okay. Any other questions you guys have? Hello, sir. Hmm. So we can use the catch block means in this uh, try resource. Now, uh, cat block, yes, cat block we obviously has to use. Okay. Cat block we can obviously use. Okay. Catch and finally, both we can use. In in uh, finally, we don't have to use, right? Because the finally uh, activity is performed by the tie with resources. Okay. Okay. So, finally, activity is basically the cleanup called the cleanup code, right? That is performed by the tie with resources. Sir, means uh, whenever we are trying to like uh, implement that or, or, uh, uh, auto closable method, mm -hmm. then we have to like override the close method. Auto closable interface we are implementing, right? Yes. Hmm. So just we have to override that close method. Close method that we have to override. And what happened is a part of the tie with resources is that your method will be automatically open, right? Uh, so if there is multiple resources uh, like opened uh, in try with resources, 
so mm-hmm. how it will clo- uh, close like uh, in that order or in like reverse like we don't need to use the finally block here so mm-hmm. it, it will close it automatically but in right. multiple uh, like uh, resources if uh, open then mm-hmm. what happens then it will it will close them uh, in the same order of declaration okay 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 so let's see if it is still complains about this or if you can you know build that or not okay so this is we have understood right we try with resources okay so now let's see if i can again rerun this I just removed everything from uh, IntelliJ. Okay, so here we can you know uh, see that it has been rewritten. So how the order is been? The constructor is going to be called first. Then whatever method you call that is coming, and automatically the close method is been called. Okay. Okay. Fine. Now if I wanted to refactor the code of read participant, right? So what I can do, I can you know have this uh, separate route. Have the URI where I'm going to be reading from the class path and I'm going to be loading the resource there. All these resources will be when I'm going to be accessing any kind of uh, you know resource that have been defined within my class path, right? And what I have to do is, I have to get this uh, object. Say, this object has been created. Now, what is this object? It's actually throws. This object throws an URI exception. Correct. So now I can also define the files out here. File. You can mention file. And then I can mention this new file, okay, based on the URI that we have received. And this source throws a file dot file not found exception. Okay. Now what I can do now instead of declaring the scanner class out here, I can define the scanner class outside the particular block. Now, from the URI itself, can I get two URL? Okay, two URL I can call. So it should be URL. Now, here I can define the file in the new scanner class okay now obviously what is happened i can now then give the scanner classes and then i can give the scanner method right now here the file not found exceptions or uh, the ui syntax exception is not part of this uh, type block right and uh, what i can do i can you know throw these methods out Right, I can append to the method signature. Similarly, the URL syntax not found methods, I append to the method signature. And then what I can have now, I can remove these lines. And I can also remove I can say that here I can also remove the cat block. Because there is no actual exception is there. I'm just simply putting in one exception that is there that will handle all kind of exception. If any exception sir, occurs during the file reading, yes. Sir, sir what is the use of this uh, means URI function? Means what it is doing? Yeah, it is basically we have uh, placed this uh, name or files under our resource folder. Correct. Okay. 
that is a participant or txt if i wanted to read the file what i need to give i give a file path where this particular file reside i can give a physical path to this file absolute file path as per my operating system or if i wanted to read any file that is present in my class path correct so now i have thrown this exception out here so let me just throw it across from here also i'm not handling them for now my code is have no issues right now when my code get built right it goes under a target folder okay under the classes i going to have the have the code right and what they're going to be having this particular resources file etc is goes inside the same root directory right so under root directory it's going to be residing there okay so that means when my class get loaded it actually loading from this .NET package, etc. Right. So if I wanted to access the resource which is available in my class path, so my class path is starting from here, right? Which is outputted into the class. What is the browser JDK uh, compiler is uh, compiled, and where is the JDK Java run command will read from? So this file has been loaded from. So I'm calling dot class get class loader who has loaded the class then from the class path i wanted to access any file or resources i can call get resource here i don't need to give any folder path or anything because it is in the, my root path right underneath dot net java java 9 i have try with resources right and here is the class been loaded so as been loaded this is the root path so it from here the class loader will load the class and from that particular class loading <coughs> with the same folder location it try to finding the participant name correct and from the participant name what i get we get a particular url that is the full path right from the url sorry we are getting two uri so we are getting the path from where we're going to be opening a file read file object right and the particular file object we are sending into the scanner and for the scanner i'm using the tie with resources now the question that chandani uh, chandima asks right so can i put multiple variable out here or can i do something like this no because you can define only one method only one variable right you can only give only one so tie with resources can operate only one resources so i can pass multiple one okay okay because it will need to call this close method on that particular one single object okay so but what it says that that i have closed this method i've called closed this particular uh, thing but the scanner object is still exist that is not disposed of so now if i run this what i will find The scanner util object which is delimiting by this it that object still resides okay so it is but it is closed the file handler that is using to reading the data that is closed but the object still reside okay previously when i putting the scanner the scope of the scanner was within this particular tri block so it is not residing outside it now with the tie with resource closing a variable that is effectively final will be leave within the scope now its scope has been increased within that method so it will be available after the method it will get disposed of or marked for disposal but not within the tie block so that is the another difference 
with the tie with resources improvement with Java 9. Okay. Does that answer your questions? Yes, sir. And the order is that at the end, it will be calling the close method, right? So what I can do, I can also, you know, throw an exception, right? Because here with the tie with resources, I put a catch exception block. Because it's required to have at least a default exception handling. So I can put throw new runtime exception. And then I can you know, try to execute this. So then will the close method be called or not? Okay. So we see the error that been coming up out here. Okay. And when that happens, But before that exception, the resources always get closed. OK? So it's whatever is constructor, whatever methods you are calling, then the close, if there is any exception, it will get printed out. OK? So I hope try with resources is clear. There is no more questions. So we can move to the next topic that is out here. That is the improvement into the collection APIs. So normally what we have to do is that we have to create any kind of list of collection, list setup map. We have to initialize an object of list setup map, and then we can add uh, methods to that. So we always need to call a constructor of sub-implementing class of those three interfaces. Say it may be hash set, etc. Map may be hash map, list may be array list, or, or other kind of a list. Those kind of things we have to put it there, right? And then if I wanted to have like an immutable version so that I cannot mod do add or remove to that particular list of item, I need to call collection dot immutable list. Correct. Now, in that case, what happened is that I have to write so many line of codes, right? There is no effective smaller methods are available, which are available into say other libraries. That is, uh, Google has a certain library where you can have like a list dot off. So similar kind of a factory method or list dot off method has been added as a function of list map and your set interface. So instead of writing all of this line of code and create an immutable list, I can simply create a list of, I can give the names of out here, and that will create a list of immutable names of strings. Here we are, type is string, and it creates automatically immutable collection. It is much more easier and convenient way of creating that. Here, this method. Yes, any questions? Yes, actually, sir, in this list of this will be an array list or any type of list it can take. Okay, so the question is whether it will be an array list or any kind of list. Yes, what sir. is the default implementation? So, let's see an example of this. So, it is the example of the factory method, right? So, previously. This code is just returning offices with the older version. And the newer version, we are getting a set. Here I'm just using set. You can also use map, etc. Let's just put a debug point out here. And let's see out here, maybe the line below to this, and see what kind of implementation we are getting. Let's run it in a debug mode in the ID. So obviously, we have understood the syntax, right? Now, if I can hover over, this is an immutable collection, as the name suggests. And you cannot add and remove to it. 
an immutable collection of set. That's it. Okay. You can see the data type of it. Both of cases, as mentioned, here it will create an immutable collection. So it will be of that particular type. So this code, this single line of code is actually equivalent of all these five line of code. Okay. So the default is set type. No, no. Set is one example, right? So these methods is added to the set. Yeah. The default is an immutable oh, collection okay. of set. If I use a list, this is immutable collection of a list. If I use a map, it's an immutable collection of a map. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. Now, if I wanted to create a collection of map, let's see, we can quickly do that. Map of string of string. Okay. And place and so here I'm creating a uh, map of string and the list of string uh, as a value. So that means here, first let me create simple list of string of say by employees and I just simply say list of I put the, all the employee name were from the Mumbai office these are employees out of the Mumbai office let me create another list of employees out of Kolkata office Okay. Now, what I next wanted to have is a map of string of list of strings. Okay. That will be, I can say, map of. So when I say map of, they are like multiple overridden version. So I can have map of key and value. That's the structure I need to follow. So I can say Mumbai and I can pass on the list of Mumbai employees. Right? And then I can return the employees. Correct. Right? Similarly, if that is a one entry key, the key value pair. The next entry key I can also put. I can put say Kolkata. I say Kolkata implies. Fair enough? Yes, sir. Okay. So that way I can, you know, have employees being displayed out. Similar way, I have shown the example of set. I can see the example of a list. I can see the example of map as well, right? So that means all the three root interfaces of collection now have the off method, and all are immutable, right? So that and in these methods, okay. So let's first try to print this out, right? Employees in offices, how can I print this out? 
let's say stream and I do the entry set. Okay, I can say entry set and I can say stream. Okay, then for each, what I'm going to get is now is the key and value pair, right? So that is key and value. So what I can say log dot info office employees and pass the key as well. Will that let me work or not? Change the second argument to an object. Okay. Okay, fine. So here we are getting And then same third argument object object and we did that. Okay, fine. Open. What I can do? Let me think that. Or what I can do? Okay, sorry. Here I'm getting the entry set right. So this is only one single value. Okay. Entry. Okay. okay. So from the entry, I can now get the value. Key dot get key key dot get well. So that will print out my employees that are present into different offices. Okay. So I can see here office wise employee list. Okay, and I also see the of office wise employees for Kolkata and Mumbai. But this is what this is like a, they are saying that this is like an immutable collection. So, can I here add put right put an entry for the US office list of and from US office I can say. Will that get me book or with that throw an error? I see there's no compiler error always seen. Okay, let it build. Okay, so this is not able support because you are not allowed to change any immutable collection. So I cannot add here uh, our US or Canada or UK office employees, right? Because this is by default the immutable collection. So I don't have to write collection dot immutable set, collection dot immutable map, collection dot unmodified set maps or uh, list. I don't have to call that. It is by default being created. Okay. Any other question on this on the factory methods? No, okay, so it is clear. So we have uh, off method or the factory method been created for list, for set, for map. We can see the example of all of three. So we can use either of them as the case may be, and it will reduce the amount of code that we write. Okay, now if you can move to the next one, is the stream related enhancement? Okay. Let's see what is the stream data enhancement is done. So we know we have read about the Java stream. It's like a stream of element. It may be any collection on any collection. I have a stream method, right? It may be any set of a map. I can have a stream method. It is the key of the map. I can have a stream method. It is the value of the map. I can have a stream method. Or on a list of objects, I can have a stream method. And on the stream, I have a several operation like map operation. I can transform the elements of this stream. It is the unbounded data uh, iteration of items, item that I can iterate over using for each. I can, you know, uh, change it from a map to a other set of collection. I can sort it out. I can filter it out. Those operations is there. Also, I can use the limit. I can also use skip. Okay. So now they have added two more methods. That is drop while and take while. 
So normally, say if I'm uh, going to be performing in a for loop, what I can do, I can use the two keywords within the for loop is to either continue with the loop or to break it out is that continue and break statement. So they are equivalent of that. Drop while is equivalent to the continue and take while equivalent to the break. Okay, so they are basically limited to the, similar to the skip and limit method this is already there. But in the skip and limit, what they basically take is they take a number, a numeric value. So if I wanted to skip the first two values of a list or a collection of stream, I can call names or offices dot stream dot skip to then i'm going to print out all of them okay or if i wanted to only limit only wanted to print first two character first two elements then i can say limit two so that will take two elements but there is no options of filtration or adding any basic conditions to it or what is basically known as a predicate OK, but when are we going to be using uh, drop while or take while, the important thing is that the collection should be ordered. OK, so let's see an example, quick example to understand this. So within the Steam, let's go into the Steam API changes that we see there. So here we are using the new list of operation. I have a list of numbers. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to limit the, how many numbers I'm going to print on the screen. So this is like an order list. So first four numbers, maybe I wanted to print, or maybe I'm to skip. So if I go into the methods time by time, I'm just committing rest of it for now so that we can come back to it. So just concentrate one at a time. So skip number, uh, limit the number that of the numbers we wanted to print. So here I pass the list of numbers and I also pass the how many number I wanted to limit. So here I'm actually limited that, okay, I wanted to see only four numbers. Okay. So here I put, say, okay, I'm on the limit printing. I'm going to using this function. So I'm going to say number dot limit stream, then limit. The stream uh, returns a stream of number, right? And when I call the limit on top of that, then I'm getting a new stream of numbers which are limited to up to four. So whatever the first four numbers are, the limit I'm going to pass, those numbers I'm going to get in a forage loop and I'm going to simply log that or print that out, okay? When I'm using skip, right? What happened in the skip is that I'm going to be print out numbers that okay but then the skip and there is like a fixed number here i'm passing four so when i say skip what's going to happen is they're going to skip the first four number and print the rest of the number that are there in the list okay so let me just simply run this So from the collection, what I can see, I can see the first 10, four numbers been printed from that particular collection. And uh, then what I can see is that when I'm using skip, it is skipping the four number and printing out the particular collections, the last two numbers. So then I can also add, uh, what is the list of numbers is that that will let us better understand this. It is simply going to print. So I'm going to compile and then I'm going to run it. So if I look into the outcome of the, we have like four number are going to limit. So the first four number will be printed, what you can see. When I call a skip method, so what happening, the first four number got skipped and only the last two number get printed out. Those are the methods that are already there as a part of Java 8. 
now what i'm going to do next is that i'm going to be using drop while and take while methods okay. so drop while take while say what be that they are saying that instead of operating on the uh, same stream without the fixed value what you're going to operate on based on the particular stream elements are satisfying a particular condition right if they satisfy the particular condition then i'm going to either drop as long as the condition is satisfied and when the condition is not satisfied and started to print out from that or i'm going to be uh so basically when that means that drop okay take while take while means what and then the drop while means basically i'm going to continue as the condition is not match i'm not going to be going further into the loop i'm not going to pending the loop i'm going to again start from the next element that is in the stream that is currently being passed to us now when that particular i uh, know take while take while it says i'm going to continue taking the value as long as my condition is satisfied true okay so if that case happens then let's see what is happening out here so only thing what it did as a part of this is that this op post, uh, operation works best when you are i'm going to look into that uh, you know output later on when you're going to be having your list sorted right so how can i sort a particular stream of value so i can say number dot stream then i call the sorted function the sorted function is sort as per the natural ordering of the elements in the list that is the by default compare method support and then i'm going to be collecting that particular collection to the list right so this list i'm naming as a ascending order now the next thing they are saying is that okay now instead of passing four five or six something like that you pass a condition as long as the condition is true either i'm going to be drop the value and i'm going to move to the next element so basically i'm going to be starting from the using the keyword continue or as long as the condition is satisfied I'm going to continue checking uh, when the number condition is not satisfied. I'm going to just simply break out. So that is the takeaway, right? So how can I define the predicate? The predicate need to be work upon on a particular uh, data type. So here the predicate is working on the number integer. So here I choose a predicate integer. So I'm just going to give you a condition. So here is the my anonymous condition on the lambda expression is the number number should be less than 20 okay so let's see the first example what i'm doing now we're going to doing the take while right so when i'm going to take while as long as my condition is being satisfied now, after sorting, what's going to happen? The numbers will be sorted based on their values. OK. So what the kind of output we can see? Now the number that have been passed out here is all been sorted ascendingly. So this is starting with 10, 18, 20, 27, 38, and 71. And it will continue going to place, print out numbers which are less than 20 as when the next element on the steep creation is written and the loop is terminated so here we can see 10 and 18 has been there 20 is not greater than 20 not less than 20 so this the numbers are not been printed out they have been ignored okay let's see this is the opposite version that is the drop point so in case of a drop while, what you are saying is that Hello, sir. Hmm. Actually, I did not understand it's what it is doing. OK. So let's first see the code. What is happening? Within Means the that code, 10, uh, 18, why it was printed. OK. 
So in the code, I'm passing a number. I'm, I'm only sorted them in ascending order. So the lower number coming first, and the followed by the next highest number. Correct? OK? This we agree? Correct? And then I'm sending a condition. Based on a condition, it will come out of a loop. It will take the number from the original stream and generate a new stream as long as the condition is true. So take the value from this stream to a newer stream as long as the condition is satisfied. It's like similar to what I can say. Similar to like if I have a number, then I use for each loop. Okay, print number into numbers. Then I'm printing this out. Okay, so this is the loop. The loop will continue as long as there are values, right? And if I wanted to come out of the loop before this, I'm saying that as long as the number less than 20, right? As long as the number is 20, then you say do print this out. As soon as it's greater than this, then what you can do. We can break out of the particular loop. So take while means take the value from original stream of values as long as your condition been satisfied. Okay. If your condition is not satisfied for the first time, the rest of the values you are totally dropping it. So here, if we again revisit that outcome, right? Okay. So here, what happening is you're passing 10, 12, 18, etc. numbers who are sorted. Now, why the 10 and 18 been shown and the 20 onwards the number is not shown? Because the 10 and 18, the condition, the predicate condition that we are passing in a take while is satisfied. That is, those two numbers are less than 20. So if they are less than 20, then they are going to be part of the new stream. OK. And then you can call int. Uh, then you can call your corresponding for each loop. And within the for each loop, you are printing it out. So the rest of the number is discarded. So that is the example of your equal. It is equivalent to your break statement. So as soon as you hit the first occurrence of the particular condition is not satisfied, you are breaking out of it. Does that answer your question? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So means it can be done also with normal means like normal, well, you know, yeah. if else, then okay. like. But what we like to do is we like to use uh, this kind of a way because it will let us write less code and also make sense what we are writing. It will also improve readability and consciousness of the code. Now the drop while is just the opposite. What it says, you are taking the values to the new stream. You drop the numbers as long as the number is the condition is satisfied. So that means instead of break, what I can put out here is a continue. So drop means you are not going to possess that particular number. OK? So drop will drop the number. That number is not going to be processed. And then you're going to be having these numbers being printed out. So what happened in the output in the rest part is that you have all the numbers. Now, 
which two numbers are being satisfied in the condition these two numbers so these two numbers are dropped rest of the numbers are actually been printed out that you can see out here okay any other question on the drop oil and take oil no sir okay so you guys got it right yes. now let's move to the next one the next topic in that they have improved in the stream is that okay so in within the stream we can do the forage right but for each has a default iteration option that means you can only move one element at a time okay you may not be moving the two element three element the step of increment so what is the so the iterator is being added which is going to be help you us to write kind of a for loop kind of a construct with string okay so let's see an example of that So here is so again I have a list of numbers, right? So what we normally write in a for loop is we given a particular initialized value or the index number from wherever it was starting. Then you make a decision. So this is my seed value. Then you make a decision, right? How long this particular uh, loop will be continuing? What is the exit condition? Okay. And then at the end you have what is the step? How much I going to move to the well, I can move by one, I can move by two, I can move by three. So this is a normal for loop, what it looks like, right? Okay. Now we can run and we know what kind of output we're going to get. Now here in descending number, okay. So what I now done is that I have uh, done the sorting in a descending order. Okay. Now the normal sorting is just, I use the natural number sorting, I just simply put the sort it and then I get a descending the uh, you know ascending list. But if I need to descending the list, I have to previously used to write a custom competitor or something that will give the precedence to the operator uh, means the second number in that particular two number pair and they get uh, change that particular order. So similarly out here we have taken the two numbers. Here we have even the custom comparator inter, uh, implementation. Integer classes are like a compare method. So I pass the number two, take a precedent over number one. And I take a, this into a loop of list that I put into the describing numbers. And here what I'm doing here is I can see the iterator construct, right? So here is they have the seat value. So we have same three parts that you can see in the for loop. So here you put in stream, the type of stream, then the iterate, then I can put what? Iterate takes a particular T values. One is a seat. Next one is a next, has next the condition, integer, predicate. And the last one is the next. How much I'm going to be jumping for? So here I'm going to simply have the seat, so zero, okay? I don't have to give any kind of variable name and then I can use any index uh, variable name I want to representing same the index value that you have uh, generated up here. So I can put index, index is less than decimal number in size, same as the previous condition and then I plus one. And then for each loop I'm painting this, right? Hello, any questions? No, sir. Okay. Let's just quickly run that and see the output. Okay. So I see the, all the values that have been printed. Both loops are giving me uh, our identical results. Now, whether it is important to give the 
So I can change the next number value, right? I can make it two. And maybe I am going to be running the code in just to check the output once. And then I'm going to talk about so, and then accordingly it print out the values out there. Whether it is required, the condition, the step, or maybe I can remove this step. I want to use the simple version. It is not going to be allowed to use me. So it is expecting a step. OK, let's give the step. OK. Uh, what about I remove the condition? Does it allow me to do anything like that? It will allow me to do things like that. But then there is no conditions, right? So then this loop, if I try to run this, it will get a kind of a index error, right? It will go on and then it will be go beyond the possible index where the value may go to find. So it gets the index out of bound error. So here maybe I wanted to limit the number of value I wanted to print it up. So in case I'm not wanted to give this, I say, only print out three. Okay, so I can get instead of giving the condition out here, which is not required, I can either use the seed values and either use the step function, but not the condition is given. In that case, I can use the limit to determine how many numbers I can safely print out without getting the index out of bound exception. Okay. I will do get print out the, all the three values. So that is the equivalent function of uh, for loop that you can use with in string. Okay. Any question on this? Yes, sir. Okay, fine. Let's move to the one of the last topic. That is the stream form optional. So optional. We know what is optional, right? Yes, sir. Okay, optional, like question mark. Question mark. Not question mark actually. Optional means is a class that has been introduced in the Java 8. It represents presence or non-presence of a value. Okay. okay. So we basically uh best practice to use optional instead of a returning any null. So if any cases of any method I need to return null if any of error is coming is better to pass an optional of that particular type and send out an empty optional value instead of writing the if the particular object value is present not is equal to null then do this else do that what i can do we can try to you know reduce the if else block and then i can you know simply get a value by using either optional dot gate again optional dot gate will throw no such element exception if when that particular condition, uh, the particular option is empty, optional is empty, then it shows no such element no exception, element not found exception, whatever, element not present exception it you want to throw. But then in that case, what you can do, we can uh, also use or else either get or else get and we can use a supplier to supply a newer value if the optional is not returning empty value then the supplier value or default value may be received okay now that has been the optional let's see how the steam support has been added for the optional So I'm going to so working with that set of numbers. I can do like this. I can do numbers, uh, and then I'm going to pick up the first number, which are matching my condition. Say here the numbers are increment by 10. So I want to see the first number, which is greater than 40, or maybe greater than 50, for example. OK? Then I do a filter normal on the stream number stream and then i call the first 
find first. What is the find first return me? It not return any value, like say int or something. It return me optional of a particular stream type that is here in the integer. The number may or may not be present depending on my conditions. If I go a number, give it a number a greater than uh, 70, then I'm not going to get anything. Now, how to get the optional value? So we get uh, simply, you know, just call uh, integer optional get. Okay. So then I'm going to get the value. So just let's focus on this and let me just comment out the rest of the lines. I'm going to be enable that later on. So here I just want to simply run this. And what is the outcome I'm expecting? What is the first value after 50 I'm expecting is the 60 will be printed out. Okay, so 60 has been printed out. Now, if I give there is a 70, and then I try to run my application again. So then after 70, there is no such element. So then what I get this optional gets is basically an empty value, optional empty. And in that case, no such element exception is been thrown because there is no value is present. Okay. So what is the alternative I can use? I can, instead of calling get, what I can do, I can simply call, here I can simply call or else, right? So what is the or else get does? Or else get or or else throw, right? I can want to throw instead of having no such element exception, if the optional is empty, I can throw my my exception, my custom exception with custom message. So that makes sense to the end user, right? So here I can you know supply my own value, right? What I can do instead, if you are not getting 70, I give you a default value of zero. That value will return to the end of the program. So let's see. So based on this condition, as the currently there is uh, throwing no such element exception to recover that, I pass a default value with the supplier method, right? So I get a zero. And if I say reduce the condition to say 30, then I'm expecting a value of 40. So in that case, how the or else get will perform, it will either return, if the value is present, it will return the value present. So that means it will return the 40. The supplier method will not be called unless there is no value is present. If the value is present, it is not going to call anything. It's not going to return any default value. So greater return. than 30 means all the values uh, more than 30 will be printed. Right? No, not printed. Here I'm not called. Oh, first, first, okay. find all. Here I say only give me the first occurrence of the value that is not present. Okay. And this is written me optional. Why? Because it's uh, kind of a giving me the first value which may or may not present based on the filter. It's basically filtering on the stream of value. Now that is so far is clear, right? Now, what if the good, the next good step will be instead of here, I mean, uh, after I get the value and then I'm making some process and then I'm doing say or else get or or else throw, okay? So why don't in the particular uh, default value, if you want to send me something, why don't you send it from your expression or your method first? So here, what I can do, uh, I can add or method out here. So instead, I will get the first value. Okay, if not, then else I use a supplier. Supply of a method say zero. So here, if I now say, and then I can safely just simply call the get. I don't have to use. Uh, I don't have to use anything. So I can simply call the gate again the gate it's always better to have a call gate or else that is the best practice so now if i uh, run this code right i'm just using gate so if i the condition is not satisfied 
Okay, here the condition is going to be satisfied. So what I'm going to get, I'm going to get 40. And if I'm going to change the condition again back to 70, the highest value of there in the particular list, I just change the value to the 70. And when I change the value to the 70, and then what has happened from the, instead of calling, I'm still calling gate. I'm not calling or else gate. So automatically the or part will kick in and it will throw, uh, giving me the default value. Okay. So that's uh, how the option we normally use is string. Now, fine. That is okay. Now say I have a method called uh, processing. I'm going to simply say print out in the stream. Uh, instead of there, I can pass a stream. Okay. Now when I'm say for each, for etc. What happening there is that I always get an optional, right? When I call the first, find first or find any, find match, etc. Now there may be the one value or it may be like multiple values, right? It doesn't matter. Stream can be represented by a single value or it can be represented by the multiple values, correct? So in that case, what I can do, let me uncomment this code. Okay. Here I can do, I can call this, this is like an optional that, that we can see. Now, of the optional, I can call the stream itself. Now, uh, here I'm searching for find first. I can find any that is also give me an optional right and then i can call stream on that okay so find any method for any value it's not need to be first okay so let me just put that let me just put this let's say 19 and try to run it Okay. So it just returned me the value. The important part out here is that that instead of you know you know converting into a some kind of string, I have can directly call a stream out of optional any kind of optional because of stream can be represented as single value also, empty value also, or multiple value also. So you can just simply put dot stream. Okay, fine. Uh, so far we are good with those changes. Whatever we have discussed today. Uh, let me check the time. So we already spent one and a half hour. So what I can do, we can continue with this session because uh, we need to cover still more. Uh, JCL we have uh, done, run. Uh, we have concurrency changes that we also need to discuss. So we will discuss that on Monday. And uh, then we can, we're going to have a like, session of a one and one and a half hour. Okay. Okay, sir. Okay, sir, sir. sir, on the last one, uh, where you said that they, it will return a stream of values, it will print the numbers which are all greater than 90. Means it will find any numbers which are greater than 90. Greater than 19. And then, then it, where it will end? Uh, but it will find only one. Okay, any, okay. Any, but it will one value. But we can directly call the stream, so that means we can it may find, it may not find, right? Or then you can directly call the steam values, right? Okay. So that's the only method we have. We don't have any method, let's say, which is like a collection of values. Okay. And the only additional changes is that now on the optional, you can also call the stream method. So if you have any so method, so like we, if you don't use dot stream, then also it will find one value. It will find the one value, but I cannot use this process on this, right? Because in the okay. argument, I'm passing the stream. I'm expecting oh, a stream. Okay. But how you can turn an optional into a stream? Because stream means a one value, stream is a absence of value, stream means a multiple value also, right? So that's 
the dot stream method they have added to the optional okay that's all okay so i think let me pause the sharing for now if you don't have any question we will continue the session on next on monday let me pause the sharing and the recording and so on.